the PKC Essentials with your girl me, Kelanta. I thank you guys for tuning in. And so with TKC Essentials, we will discuss the essentials of the kingdom, what is essentially needed for you to move in the earth realm in the kingdom of God. Overall, it is TKC Ministries, but my YouTube and most of my uh, social media is TKC Essentials. Like I said, is the essentials, the necessities of living in the kingdom. And if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would like you guys to go ahead and hit that subscription button below. And if you are new to my YouTube channel, we just discuss kingdom culture, everything pertaining to the kingdom. As you guys know, we are in the end times. And the reason why I put air quotes is because the end times is not a, it began when Messiah was crucified. That began the last days. It was the end of the way that the Hebrews and the Torah keepers lived in that time. So from Jesus on, we are in the end times and it's going to get worse before it gets better so as you can see things are getting worse things aren't getting better this is the time where you need to seek god with all your heart yeshua says we don't know the minute nor the hour and on this channel i stress it so much we are spiritual beings we are our soul our soul is our will, our intellect, our emotions. So if you're on this side of life right now, you have a purpose, whatever it may be. But the foundation of that should bring God glory. At the end of the day, what you do should bring your creator glory. And so let's go ahead and get into the teaching. So what we are going to be going over is this is the last video that I'll be doing on cursing. And the effects of curses and how people attempt to curse you and how people attempt to send curses over your life if you could go back and watch part four you will understand the spiritual realm and how when we do die when we do shed this flesh in hebrew we become an elohim yeshua became an elohim jesus he beat death he was able to come back to show his disciples that this is the way to eternal life. And that's the whole thing about living on into eternity. So according to Hebrew thought, we never really die. Those evil spirits are there. They are in another realm, in another dimension. They are around constantly. So the God that we serve is the Lord of the heavenly host. He's bigger than them, grander than them, and they all are subject to him and to man because we are made in the image of God so they are also subject to us as well the Lord has helpers to help you there are angels helping you we just need to be aware of what's going on around us because we have a present 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 help if you have not yet subscribed go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up if you are enjoying the content so far and also leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you just are enjoying the content. Let's go ahead and get into the teachings of curses. Um, so the scripture we're going to be coming from is going to be Ezekiel 13. First verse is going to be 18 through 21. Starting from the New Living Translations, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says, what sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people young and old alike you tie magic charms on their wrists and furnish them with magic veils do you think you can trap others without bringing destruction on yourselves so as we can see the prophet is dealing with witches soothsayers he is dealing with charm workers those who work spells it says, what sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people? The word there, ensnare, means who are trapping the souls of my people. As I was saying in this curses series, the, those who try to work curses on you are seeking your soul. They are seeking to trap your soul. And if you aren't covered and aware of God's presence, his constant help in your life 
you will easily become ensnared. The word of God says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. If you don't know that you have a present help God, a God that is here now, but if you don't know this, you will easily become ensnared. First thing a witch will do is try to place fear in you telling you, oh, I'm going to work this on you. I'm going to do this to you. They don't know that the, sir, the God that you serve, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says, what sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people, young and old alike. You tie magic charms on their wrists. Some people actually go to these botanical stores and they actually buy these things for themselves. They have these necklaces and these charms on, saying that it's it's warding off evil. But the God that we serve, you don't have to wear a thing and he will protect you. The only thing you need to wear is the word. You need to gird up your loins. You need to put on the full armor of God. You are going into God's territory where he reigns and where he rules. And if you can't quite see in that realm or discern that realm and what you're doing, you can easily bring a curse on yourself. You can easily bring a curse on yourself. Now, if you guys have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love for you guys to go ahead and subscribe. The notification bell below so that you can be notified when I do post more videos in regards to the kingdom of God and how we are to maneuver and to move in the kingdom. And I would love for you guys to comment below as well. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the content. And so verse 19 says, you bring shame on me among my people for a few handfuls of barley, for a little money or a piece of bread. By lying to my people who listen to lies, you kill those who should not die and you promise life to those who should not live. They kill those who should not die and promise life to those who should not live. The King James Version, which is close to the original translation, says, And you pollute me. So they pollute God. They add this nasty layer to God. Because God does not desire that anyone should die. Those other dimensions and realms are full of people. Full of souls. Full of spirits. It's packed there. When we leave here, we go there for the rest of our life. So what these people are doing is they are polluting that realm. They are polluting the goodness of God. God is a good God. And they're polluting him. It says, will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? To slay the souls that should not die. And to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. These adversarial spirits that oppose man are defeated already. And, and by them already being defeated, when someone places a curse on you, or when you try to place a curse on someone else, you're bringing them into that defeated realm where they won't more than likely or you won't more than likely be able to progress, especially if you don't know the goodness of God. And if, especially if you, don't, if you don't know that these things really and truly can't have any power over you. If you acknowledge the one true and living God and you acknowledge that Yeshua, Jesus, came in the flesh and was resurrected into eternity because you want to live in this flesh and eventually be resurrected into eternity. So we are to mimic and live Jesus. And in the kingdom, we are Messiah. We are him. And in Messiah, we trample on wicked and evil spirits. We have power over darkness. I'm going to actually read a scripture slash prayer. I'm going to give you guys an idea of what, I'm, what I mean when I say that we are Messiah. This is the prayer 
that we are in union with Christ. So it says, in Christ, I say Messiah, in Messiah, I am built up together to be a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. So the scripture that I'm referencing in this prayer is Matthew 28, 18, Matthew 18, 18. And it's just about the moving of the heavens. To be one with Messiah is to place your soul in heavenly realms, your true being, your inner being, to place it in heavenly realms, to subdue and to have dominion. It says, in Messiah, I am built up together to be a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. God has raised me up with Messiah and seated me with him in heavenly realms. In Messiah Yeshua or Christ Jesus, we are and I am Messiah being a part of his body. He being the head. So through me, the Lord, the creator of all things, the God that Messiah serves will show the incomparable riches of his grace. God will show the incomparable riches of his grace. For it is by grace that you and I, that I have been saved through faith, not of myself, but a gift from God. I am God's handiwork created through faith in Messiah, which is our Messiah, our Lord, our leader. We are his disciples. To do good which god prepared before the fall in advance before any of this stuff happened for us to do before the fall of man i am made to sit with messiah and share his throne we are made to sit with messiah and share his throne this is what comes with sharing the throne of messiah having authority over the powers of the air the prince of the air and the spirit that worketh through the children of disobedience. Now that will piggyback off of what this woman was doing, disobeying God and lying. So we have through Messiah, we have authority over the spirit that worketh through the children because we're all God's children of disobedience, having the authority to trample evil spirits, wickedness, darkness snakes and in hebrew snakes was like representation of something that will just wrap around you and just tie you up suffocate you scorpions you know scorpions have those little stingers and all the power of the enemy and it says here and nothing will harm me nothing will harm me the lord says because i believe it on him messiah says this because I believe it on him. The works that he does, we, I, shall also do. But also greater works shall I do. Because like I said, Messiah is still living. He is alive today. Because Messiah, being seated with the Father, goeth unto him for his disciples. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of darkness of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms messiah has given me you and i authority over them and seated us you and i spiritually far above they are rebel holders they are rebels but they have been dethroned by messiah by messiah coming back as the resurrected one they have been dethroned by Messiah and I now us we all of us who are in the kingdom we now reign over them I hope that gives you some hope and that gives you a sense of lordship and stability and divinity that you reign over these curses that you reign over these witches that are trying to curse your life you reign over them but if you don't know this, you will be in bondage. All right. So if you guys have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love for you guys to go ahead and do so. And if you are subscribed, I would love for you to go ahead and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified when I drop more jewels. So 
we're gonna get back into the teaching in regards to curses. So I'm going to go over the signs that you could possibly be under a evil spirit, cursed, or someone's trying to work that on you. Because if you are in God, you cannot be cursed. Simple as that. But if you step out, and, and our lifestyle matters, you guys. We can't live any kind of way or think that God is just going to know. God has a reputation to uphold. He wants you to be kingly. Jesus was sinless. He may have died at 33, he, you know, he died young. They crucified him. But he was sinless his whole life. I don't see how Jesus didn't. He had to have had that revelation of who he was. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus lived out his purpose. We're all living out our purpose. So, signs that someone may have placed something on you. Confusion. Not just the normal, oh my God, I forgot where the keys were type of thing. Constant, constant, aggravating confusion. Fear. Terrible, terrible fear. And those who work witchcraft and all of these things they try to intimidate you by telling you that they're going to do something to you and if you aren't covered by the blood of Messiah and if you aren't aware of who you are you will begin to fear and that type of terrible fear will open the door for evil spirits to come and to torment you that type of fear is a terrible fear. There's even a fear of death. And we should not fear that because it's a part of life. Anger is another one. Extreme, extreme wrathful anger. To where you would take someone's life. For a chance to take your own life. That is a possible sign you're definitely out of covenant. You're definitely out of alignment with God. You don't know who you are and you're lost. And when you're lost, if you don't know who you are, these evil spirits have a field day in your life. Intimidation. You're intimidated. You're intimidated extremely intimidated by everyone and everything. Now, if you're in God, in covenant with Messiah, these things won't rule you. Yes, you may go on a job interview and you feel a little bit of intimidation. It's the boss. They're interviewing you. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about extreme where you don't even want to darken your door to go out dumbness where that can go with confusion not being able to concentrate these are possible signs that someone has done something you've done something that is definitely outside of God's will and his covenant he doesn't want you to have any of these things the word of God says, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, power of love and of self-control. You may not be able to control the circumstances of life. Everyone has their own free will to do as they please. But you can control what you believe. You can control how you react. You can control how you behave. You can control when you pray, when you fast, when you don't pray, when you don't fast. And when a trial comes your way, God always wants to see if you know what to do. And I'm talking to those who has verbally accepted Messiah Yeshua as their Lord and their Savior. If you have not, you need to do that now and live the dunamis power that is in Messiah. None of these things can touch you. In this 
situation with this woman. A lot of the Israelites and the Hebrews had forsaken the covenant of their ancestors. They have forsaken the covenant of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you look at the geographical location of Israel, Israel was here in the middle of Egypt on this side, Saudi Arabia, Asia, Europe, Greece, Ethiopia, Africa. Israel was right there, part of Africa, of course, but they were just not at the same point. They were there in the center. And so what God did was gave them this piece of land. You know why? Everyone had to come through there, there, to go here, to go there, to trade, to do this, to do that. Israel was supposed to be the center place of influence for the whole world because that was the whole world in that time. And when they forsake it, they forsake their covenant with the creator who revealed himself to them, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's when all hell began to break loose. They began to worship these false gods. They began to practice these things that was an abomination to their ancestors and an abomination to the God that they knew. A lot of these people, this is a new generation after Moses, a new generation after Joshua, forsake the covenant of Most High for material things. If we aren't aware of our past, we're going to, we're bound to repeat it. And what are we doing now? We forsake God for material things. God said, if you seek me first in my righteousness, everything that you need will be added on to you. I have everything that I need, you guys. When I tell you that I know, you know, from an outside, that's why you have to know God. Outside looking in, people want me to do this. People want me to do that. People think I should be here. People think I should be there. But with my relationship with God, I am exactly where I need to be. And you know why I know I'm exactly where I need to be? Because I have peace. That is what God promises you. That peace that passes all understanding. It says in Philippians 4, 6, 8, I do not fret or have anxiety about anything. This is Paul speaking. But in every circumstance, because we cannot control the circumstances of life, and in everything, by prayer and petition, with a definite request, with thanksgiving, I continue to make my request wants and needs known to God and God's peace shall be mine that peace is that tranquil state of a soul remember now she was trying to snare the souls of God's people but if you know who you are in God and you know how to make your request known to God with thanksgiving that it's already done and that's the secret that they put in the secret oh you have to see yourself with this. You have to. It's biblical, you guys. It's biblical. God's people said it first. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation. And that word salvation is being saved, being helped. Assured of God's help through Messiah and so fearing nothing. From God fearing nothing from the creator of all of this people think that God will be angry at you if you're in covenant with him and you and you stumble he's not he's not going to be angry he is like a father once you accept Messiah and Jesus and you accept what Jesus said I do what my father I do what I see my father do so once you get in alignment with Messiah God becomes your father 
and he will begin to chastise you, but he will never be angry with you as he would with someone who is deliberately working stuff, who is deliberately trying to ensnare the souls of innocent people. God will never be angry with you. You guys, you get mad at pastors because they stumble and fall. And God always send helpers to help them. And what I mean by helpers is angels to help them. But we, as children of God, as leaders and influencers, we fall. And that is what is considered sin, is falling from God's grace. But that's it. We're still in covenant with him we're still with him and that's why we come back because we know the love if you know that you have a good father and you get enticed by something out there sometimes you don't go to your father because you feel like he's going to be angry because you should know better right like i should know better than this my dad is going to be not like man he doesn't think like us God is like the greatest father because what will happen is God is looking at you like oh my god my poor baby go and get my baby Messiah leaves the 99 for that one God is like go get my baby before he or she gets ensnared by that witch or he or she gets entangled in the world and lose her or his soul, your will, your intellect, your emotions. God sends Messiah. He sends angels to go and grab you back. The word of God says, if you make your bed, those who are in God, in hell, you can have hell on earth. If you make your bed in hell, God is a present help. All you have to do is reach out in faith and receive his love, his power, his wisdom, and you will be fine. If I stumble tomorrow, I don't fear that God will be angry with me. By my free will, I will lose connection with the Most High Divine. And so, we have to learn to be content. So it says, fearing nothing from God and being content with my earthly lot. So a lot is something that was dealt out to you. You know, you shake the dice and boom, that's your lot. And whatever sort it is, so that the peace, the word here is shalom. That means the whole well-being of your being, wholeness which transcends all understanding. So it's going to transcend everything that you could currently understand about your situation. It shall garrison. That word garrison means to, to troop, to station as a fortress, to defend. So God's peace will garrison. It will defend and mount guard over your heart and mind, which is your soul. All of this is in Messiah. So whatever is true, these are the things that you must in all situations fix your soul on, fix your mind on. And your mind and your soul is connected. Because your soul is, in, in the Hebrew, they believe that your soul was more in this area of your body, in your groin area, in your livers and all of these things. Because if you ever had a gut feeling, that is your soul feeling. But your soul affects your brain because your brain tells your body what to do. So it's, it's all connected. So that was a little nugget of science for you guys. This is what we are to train our brain, our mind, the physical, I mean, the soulish part of us trains this brain, this physical brain. Because when we die, this physical brain dies. It's a part of our flesh. So don't think. Oh, my brain this, my brain. Your brain is only doing what your mind tells it to do. This is what we have to focus our mind on to change our brain, our physical body. You know how you work out and you can change your muscles, make it bigger. You can change your brain through your mind. 
through working it out in the word of God. This is what you do. This is what Paul says. The things that you think on, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, whatever is respectable and is honorable and seeming, seemingly something with a certain quality, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, lovable, kind, and winsome, attractive, beautiful, lovely, and gracious. If there is anything worthy of praise, I will think on and wait and take account of these things. Fixing my mind on them daily. This is a daily thing. Not something you do one day and tomorrow you don't. This is a daily thing. Because what, what do you do when you're working out? Do you work out one day and then you think that you're going to have the muscles or you're going to have the desire that you need? No. You work out. You set a routine. Right? You say, okay, I'm going to work out seven days a week. I'm going to work out three days a week or whatever. You need to set a routine with God. Say, hey, God, we're going to meet up this time every morning. We're going to meet up this time every afternoon. We're going to meet up this time every evening. We begin to work that muscle from your soul work this muscle so that this muscle can begin to manifest because whatever your brain projects whatever your brain does that's what your body's going to do so your soul governs your brain your brain governs your body but it's all one so when you are divided and when you are separated when your mind is scattered your brain will begin to be scattered in your physical body you will be able to see it on your physical body. You, your face becomes darker. Um, you get bags under your eyes. It's, it's, it's a physical tell, tell. You can tell physically when someone's in anguish or when their mind is scattered. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their demeanor. God brings order to chaos, you guys. Okay, so that's what God does. But when, when you're not outside of him, it's a lot of chaos. Getting back to Ezekiel 13. So we just read verse 19. So we did Ezekiel 13, 18 and 19. And for this teaching, it does go to verse 21. We got two more verses. All right, so let's go to verse 20. And if you have not yet subscribed, I recommend that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the, hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when I do drop another video. And leave a comment below. I would love to know what you guys really and truly think about this teaching. And if there's any improvement, because we are all a family here. So I want to cater to you guys. I want to do for you guys. I want to know what you guys want to hear what you guys want me to do better so that we can do this thing the right way and as a family okay so i am here to serve you so whatever you want to hear whatever you want me to improve on if you want me to post more or whatever content or whatever question or whatever anything let me know in the comments and I will leave my social media, which is mostly just TKT Essentials. And then my podcast is TKT Essentials as well. And it's Essentials with a Z. Okay? Essentials with a Z. Alright? I look forward to serving you guys. I look forward to dropping knowledge and wisdom as the Lord gives it to me. I'm going to give it to you guys. And so in Ezekiel 13, verse 20 says... So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against all your magic, charms, which you use to ensnare my people like birds. I will tear them from your arms, setting my people free like birds set free from a cage. That's the God we serve, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to read the King James Version. It says, Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, again, that's magic charms, wherewith you, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. So they're trying to pull your soul out. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go. So wherever they are holding your soul captive, God is going to let your soul go. Even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. So once someone tries to snatch your soul, 
they are trying to ensnare and trap your soul. But there is a God that is watching and he is going to wreak havoc in their life. God loves you that much. And so verse 21 says, I will tear off the magic veils and save my people from your grasp. They will no longer be your victims. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The King James Version says, your handkerchiefs also will I tear. So that's like a veil. And deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye, this person who is working this, shall know that I am the Lord. So the person who is working that, the person who has tried to snatch your soul, give your soul to God right now. Make a declaration to build a relationship with him and allow him to take your soul back, to place you back in alignment with him and to defeat the enemy in your I pray that this was able to help you guys. This is the last video I'll be doing on the series of curses. Unless you guys have more questions about curses, I will definitely read the comments and take that into account and do a video on it. Whatever questions you have, I am here to answer. But as for me, this will be the last video I do on curses from what I have here for my notes. I pray that you guys were blessed by this teaching. If you were, you can definitely leave a comment. You can definitely share the video as well. Share this video with anyone that you believe may be under some type of witchcraft or may be working some type of witchcraft, charms, spells. It's not new to God. It's not new to our creator. So again, I love you. Welcome to the kingdom. We are powerful. We reign. We have dominion. We rule. And we rock. Alright. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I love, love, love you. And I can't wait to serve you again. And to post another video. I love you. Until next time. Goodbye.